Hello everyone and welcome to this first tutorial for Transport World Simulator. Um, today I'm going to show you how to get the game set up in the first place after extracting the whole thing, obviously. And I'm also going to show you one train. Not sure which one yet, but I think it'll be a subway train so that you can try out your driving skills. Okay, let's go. Um, I'll click on the on the file, on the TWS.exe file. Select language dialog. Language is list box. Shortcut L. I have to select the language. Deutsch. English. Let's choose okay, English button. and then Shortcut tab o. and OK. English. No, I don't want to use a screen reader. This dialogue for some reason doesn't contain any text. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway. Choose a voice from the following menu with your up and down arrows. Press enter to select. Yeah. I have to choose a voice. Let's do that. Microsoft. Scan soft Daniel. Scan soft Dan. Scan soft. Scan soft. Scan soft. Scan soft. Scan soft Leander score full one. Let's choose this one. Then increase right, the rate a right bit. Right 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 four right five. With the left and right arrow keys and press enter. Changes saved. Voice saved. Scan soft Leander score full underscore twenty two khz. Loading. Please wait. Now it's loading. Yeah, that takes a while. <laughs> Welcome to Transport World Simulator version 0.9.5. You can use the control keys to skip over spoken messages and sounds. Please select an entry with the arrow keys and press enter to activate it. Packs. We're in the menu. So. Let me show you the settings menu. Settings. You are now in the settings menu. Here you can change many different settings for TWS. Dialog. Learn game sounds button. You can navigate through this menu by pressing the tab key. There's a learn game sounds menu. Let's try that out. Please select an entry with the arrow engine door signal. Yeah. By pressing enter, we can listen to the sound. Please select an entry with the arrow key engine faster than the calculated braking curve. Please select an engine fast start braking for the next station. Please select an engine fast start speed warning. Please select an entry engine fast start departure time. Please select an entry with the arrow key engine fast start speed depart this train is ready to depart. Please select an entry with the arrow keys and press enter to activate it. And so on and so forth. There are 25 different sounds in this menu. Um, I'd recommend listening to all of them, and if you aren't sure which one is which, then listen to them again. Just so that you have a smoother gameplay experience afterwards. So, go back with escape. Sound test button. The sound test. Press the left or right arrow keys to test the corresponding audio channel and escape to cancel. Yeah, it tells us what to do. That's left. That's right. <laughs> Press escape again. Language button. Yeah, there we can choose the language. TTS settings button. TTS settings, the menu from before. Measuring system button. The measuring system we can change from metric to imperial by pressing enter or return. Joystick settings button. The joystick settings. The joystick mode is something that's still in the beta version since I personally don't have access to a joystick. So I can't test it. But if one of you is able to test it, then please tell me if it works. And if it doesn't, then what exactly doesn't work? Select the gender of the voice to use for the driver. List marks. Let's select the gender of our driver. Male. Male, yeah, I mean, for me. Use sounds instead of voice to tell the distance to a station when approaching check marks. Checked. So you can choose whether the game should use sounds or the TTS voice 
to tell you the distance to the next station. I'll leave the sounds since I personally prefer that. The departure message included in some schedules will be spoken automatically. Check box. Checked. Yeah, the departure message in some schedules. Activate sounds for braking curves when approaching a speed restriction. Check box. Checked. The sounds for braking curves when approaching a speed restriction. That's very interesting since this checkbox will define if there are sounds played whenever you are above a braking curve for a speed restriction. So basically, whenever you're too fast. Rather helpful. Warning sound when driving more than 10% faster than the current speed limit checkbox. Checked. Yeah, pretty self explanatory, I think. Activate the CIFA function checkbox. Checked. The CIFA or driver safety device. So if this is activated, you have to press Q every 30 seconds or every minute or every 400 meters, depending on the vehicle. After the vehicle gives you an alarm. So yeah, not every vehicle has it, but most do. Activate manual entering of the cab checkbox. Checked. Manual entering of the cab. Yeah, let's leave that one activated so that I can show you. Automatically select dynamic weather when starting a new run checkbox. Checked. Dynamic weather will be selected automatically. You can also choose the weather manually, of course. I'll personally leave it on the dynamic setting. Activate speed announcements when accelerating or braking checkbox. Checked. Yeah, speed announcements when accelerating or braking. That's that's really great, actually. It kind of works like tube sim, by the way. Announcement of the current throttle position checkbox. Checked. The current throttle position. I usually don't use this, but I leave it on for this time. Sound master volume text field. 100. Yeah, the sound master volume is 100. I'll turn Black. that down a bit. Zip, zip, one deleted. Eight. Five. Since 100 is a bit too loud. Only show consists when selecting a modded vehicle checkbox. Unchecked. Yeah. It also is allowed to show you specific modded vehicles and not only consists that doesn't play a role for the gameplay at the moment, but it will at a later date. Activate emergencies checkbox. Unchecked. Yeah, the emergencies, let's leave them off. Activate joystick checkbox. Unchecked. Yeah, that too. Especially since it's still in the beta stage. Deactivate the status monitor if the game is not in focus checkbox. Checked. Yeah, that's a nice function since you have a status monitor that uses your braille display. But if you, for example, are driving a high-speed train and you know that you have 100 kilometers to the next station, which can happen, then you probably might want to do something else whilst playing. So it can be very useful to let the game just show you the status monitor only when it's in focus. So that's what this checkbox controls. OK button. Let's press OK. Please select an entry with the arrow keys and press Enter to activate it. Pax. Okay, the music's a bit too quiet now. Settings. You are now in the settings menu. Oh, the act, 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 only sound master volume text field. 85. Black. 5. 8 deleted. 9. Zip. Only act, act, the act, OK button. Please select an entry yeah, with the arrow keys and press to activate it. Packs. So, then, let's choose a route. We go to Packs. Select a route packed on Austria. British Rail. Menus always work the same way. Up and down with the arrow keys and then go to OK with tab. DB. British Rail. DB. Geo Transit and Subway Toronto. Marius Elevin. Subway New York. Hmm. Yeah. TFL London. No, VGF. Let's... Vienna Uban. VGF. TFL London Underground. VGF. Verkus Gesellschaft Frankfurt Main. Vienna Uban. VG. TFL London Underground. Okay, but. Take this one. Select your route dial. Original Met. TFL Bakalu Line. TFL Jubilee Line. TFL Northern Line. Edgewa. Charing Cross. Morden. TFL Piccadilly Line. Cockfosters. Heathrow Terminal 5. TFL Northern Line. Edgewa. Charing. OK button. We've chosen the Northern Line. T select the starting point dialog. Starting point list box. Burnt Oak. Burnt Oak. You can choose the starting point. I'll leave this blank because I want to start at Edgewa, which is the first station. OK button. Now, select the last stop for this run. Burnt Oak. Collindale. Morden Depot. Now go to the last position by pressing the end key, which is Morden Depot. Morden. Then up one to Morden, so we can drive the whole route, which we won't do today. But I just thought I'd show you. OK, button. Now, please set the departure time dialog. Hours in 24 hour format text field. Zero. Blank. Zero deleted. Yeah, I want to travel at 8. 8 a.m. Text field. Zero. OK, button. 
so during rush hour. Um, these fields and dialogues won't appear if you have a route that offers different schedules for different services, because then the schedule will include the stations you're going to call at. And sometimes, especially with newer routes, it will also include the departure time. If it doesn't, then the dialogue that I'm currently in will appear. But if it does, then obviously it won't. But on this route, we don't have any schedules, at least for now. Maybe we'll have them at a later date, who knows? Select your vehicle dialogue. Vehicles list marks. 1995 tube stock on the northern line. Yeah, let's choose that one. Vehicles. We could also choose a modded vehicle, which is the last entry in the menu always. 1995 tube stock on the northern line. But let's go with that okay one. Okay, button. So now we are basically next to the train, looking towards it, and we have to enter. You can hear this ticking noise on the right side. I'm just going to walk towards it with the right arrow key. So it's in the center and then press enter to enter the, the train. Inside. This station is Edgware. This is a Northern Line train by a Charing Cross terminating at Morden. Yeah, there we are. <clears throat> so, I don't particularly care for the time today since I'm sure we'll take way longer than usual. Um, this, the section that now follows is just a basic setup of a train. Some trains do have more functions, other trains less, even though that's pretty rare. Um, I recommend reading the manual because for some trains there are specific functions that are mentioned in the manual. So yeah, you know, probably be pretty helpful, all things considered. But yeah, anyway, let's get this thing started. So we're pressing T for the battery. Battery activated. Then L for the lights. Lights activated. There, on different trains, we would also have to press P for the pantograph, which we don't have here, and H for the main switch, which we also don't have here. I mean, this train is powered by a third rail, so and a fourth rail. So, you know, anyway, put the reverser into the forward position with W. Forward. And the horn with space, just because. On B and N, there might either be different horns, a bell, or announcements. Stand clear of the doors. Like here, this was B and N. Customers are reminded that for their own safety, smoking is not permitted on any part of London Underground. Same with M, though M might also control the mirrors. Please mind the gap between the train and the platform. Register. In this case, it's an announcement system. So. Accept. That's the GSMR system. It's basically a separate screen that we navigate through with comma and period and we press enter basically on an item with the key to the right of the period. In German it's hyphen. I think in Eng on the English keyboard it's a slash, but I'm not sure. Register. So let's go to register. GSMI dialog. Acknowledge. Now we are in a dialogue. Head code read only text field. 194. Our one. head code is 1. Capital E. 9. 4. 1E94. E That's either selected randomly or also specified in the schedule, depending on which route you're taking. So 1E94. E code text field. Let's put this into the third dialogue box, the code one. box. Capital E. 9. 4. Which is also the only one that you can actually write in. Signal number read only text field, 7328. The signal number is 7328, so we'll only take the last digits of this number. Basically everything except for the first digit. So if there were five digits, then we'd take the last four. If there were three, we'd, we would take the last two and so on and so forth. Code text field, signal number read only that? text field, 7328. Code text field, uh, blank. 7328, so we add to the text numbers three, three two, two and eight. eight information button there's also an information button which will basically tell you exactly what i've just told you register button 
and then register and we hope it works. Registration successful. Yeah, I guess that worked. Emergency call. And if we go through here, emergency call, urgent call, urgent call accept. accept information. And information. Head code one ninety four. There tells us our head code again. Um, regarding the GSMR system, I'd recommend studying the manual, especially the section on the GSMR system, since you can do quite a bit. That's yeah, but that's a bit too much to show today. Okay, so in the other direction from B, we have V. Ventilation activated. The ventilation. Ventilation deactivated. Let's leave that one. Let's leave that one deactivated since it's pretty noisy. With C and Z on the English keyboard, we can choose our target speed for our automatic speed control. So five kilometers per hour. Ten kilometers per hour. Go a bit ahead. Five kilometers per hour. Zero kilometers per hour. And a bit down again. Then with X. This is our sanding device. So yeah, you know, if a train has to stop quickly, then the driver can activate this and this will increase the braking power of the wheels on the track. So the other many other keys are not used on this train. On some trains you have to choose the directive effort, the AFB or the automatic speed control is allowed to use by pressing K and J to increase and decrease it respectively. On this train, we don't have to do that. We can just control the tractive effort by selecting a step on the throttle control and then pressing tab to activate the automatic speed control. So, then let's release our brakes with Q. Brakes released. On the Y key on the English keyboard, you might have a handbrake that you might have to release. Not every train has this. This one doesn't. So, you know. Nothing happens. O activates the windscreen wipers. And with I, we can apply the brakes. Brakes applied. Yeah, it just told us that. Driving step minus 10 means the brakes are applied. Brakes released. And release them again. So, now underground train specific stuff. With Q, we can hold down the deadman switch, like tab and tube sim. With 1, we can lock it down and then don't have to hold it like F12 and tube sim. So release it again. Then, in general, by pressing the delete button, you can hear the state of the next signal. Next signal, green in 1474 meters. Okay, so ours is green, nice. Um, okay, so now let's go through all the F keys and I'll tell you what they tell you. F1 Zero kilometers per hour. tells you your current speed, which is also the leftmost number on the braille display. Then Five kilometers per hour. the current speed limit is F2 and to the right of the current speed on your braille display. Then 1469 meters, burnt oak. The distance and name of the next station. On some routes, this will also tell you if the next station is a request stop or not, if that is a feature. Speed limit change to 40 kilometers per hour in two meters. Yeah, the next speed limit change is on a four. Eight, five, 38. The current time is F5. Hours, minutes, seconds. Same format for F6. Eight, zero, zero. Okay, so we are over five and a half minutes late. But okay, I don't care. Zero. F7 tells you how many people are waiting to board. 330. And F8 tells you how many people you currently have on board. F9 is interesting. That's the weather forecast, or rather the current weather. The current temperature is 8 degrees Celsius. It is cloudy. The highest temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. The lowest temperature is 8 degrees Celsius. The current wind speed is 1 kilometers per hour in driving direction. Yeah, okay. F10 tells you if you are crossing a bridge or driving in a tunnel, then it'll tell you the name. With F11 you can either activate or deactivate the status monitor. Generally it's activated. And F12 One meters. tells you the distance that you've traveled. So, 
Braille display status monitor. The left number is your current speed. After that is the speed limit, then the driving step, and then the target speed for the automatic speed control. If this is deactivated, it'll show an X. After that, you have your door control panel. There's a percent sign to the left, or rather, there are up to four percent signs next to each other. The left and right one are always there. The two in the middle are the interesting ones. Since if the left one of the ones in the middle isn't there, that means that the left doors are open. And if the right one isn't there, then the right doors are open, obviously. After that, you can see the distance to the next station. And um, yeah, that's it. So let's close the doors. This the doors train closed. is about to depart. Please mind the doors. Doors are controlled via the corresponding shift keys, so like a tube sim. Um, I'll drive the first station manually. I'll increase the throttle position with D, decrease it with A, and when getting past zero to negative numbers, the train will start to brake. So, let's lock our dead man switch, since I don't want to hold it down, and let's go. One, two, three, four, five, the speed limit is 40 kilometers per hour. To the right, you can hear the driving step announcements. To the left, you can hear the current speed. You can also press Ctrl S to get to driving step zero. Let me show that by braking a bit. I press Ctrl S. And that was the sound that the next station is 1250 meters away. Speed limit is 72 kilometers per hour. Neutral. So the sound for the distance to the station, its pitch will increase the closer you get to the station. That's 500 meters now. But you can listen to all of them in the Learn Game Sounds manual. So yeah, just have a look through them. I'm sure you'll manage. 300 meters soon there'll be an announcement and then we'll the hear the sound that we... This one. This means that I have to start breaking. So I've set driving step minus five. And I stopped three meters too early. So let's go to driving step zero. We have a bit of speed and that's the bell for the station. Let's open the doors. This station is Burnt Oak. This is a okay. Northern Line train by Charing Cross, terminating at Morden. And we are apparently ready to go again, as you heard. So, now, automatic or not automatic driving, automatic speed control. Let's close the doors. This doors train closed. is about to depart. Automatic Please speed control mind the doors. I activated the automatic speed control with the tap key. 5 km per hour. 25 km per hour. 45 km per hour. 70 km per hour. 70 km per hour. And I chose 70 km per hour and choose driving step 5 so it'll accelerate with the maximum tractive effort available. And while it's doing that, I can show you something else. I'll jump out of the train with the left arrow key. So that's the outside camera. We also have different perspectives. So on the back of the train. Now we are traveling on the buffers of the train. So basically just outside the front window. In front of the train. We are about 70 meters in front of the train and it'll pass now.
Next station. Yeah, and then we'd only have the front of the train left, which positions us directly at the front. But I think that I'll wait here for the train to arrive and I'll show you the deceleration from outside. So as soon as the braking sound comes, I'll decrease the, the automatic speed control down. target speed down to 5 km an hour. Because then the train will slow down to that speed. 32, 24, 16, Coming in from 18, 0. And we're 10 meters too early. Minus zero kilometers per hour. Zero five. five kilometers per hour. Minus zero kilometers per hour. Automatic speed control deactivated. This station Wolfenberg. is Collendale. This is a Northern Line train by Charing Cross, terminating at Morden. And let's jump in again with the left arrow. Inside. So, the next and last thing I want to show you for today is the automatic train operation. Not many trains have this, but this one does, which is actually why I chose it. So, yeah, let's activate it with R. Okay, we're ready to depart apparently. Automatic train control activated. ATC activated. And then close the doors. And then the train will do its thing and we can just enjoy the ride. This train is about to depart. Please mind the doors. Eight. As you can hear, it departs as soon as the doors are closed. 24. 32. 72. And it will also decelerate automatically when approaching the next station. Though we, yeah, we enter the tunnel. Though we still have to control the doors manually. And yeah, we also have to release the brakes in some instances. If it's coming in too fast, then it may apply the air brakes, which we will have to release them. And we also have to reactivate the automatic train operation at every station. So, yeah, like in reality, when a train drives automatically, but there's still a driver inside. Next station is Collendale, in about a kilometer. Oh no, it's not quite in there. Oh, it's right. 94 meters, Hendon Central. Hendon Central, yeah, thought so. <laughs> yeah, 500 meters. And it'll decelerate soon. When it's doing that, then you can, if you have your braille display connected, watch the driving step, since that's going to be rather interesting. Next Central. Green in 150 meters. 64. 56. 48. Because for most of the time, it won't actually decelerate with the highest possible braking power. Zero. So, there we are. This station is Hendon Central. This is a Northern Line train by Charing Cross, terminating at Morden. So, just because we'll deactivate this train now. The brakes are already applied. Apply the brakes. Lights deactivated. Deactivate the lights. Pull back the reverser with the S key. Backward. Release the dead man switch. And deactivate the battery. battery deactivated. So, that's it. Thanks for joining me. Oh, no, I'll still press Alt F4. Your score is 115. Yeah, our score Please is 115. The press enter to activate it. Packs. The score can be checked with the key to the right of the L key. I think it's the colon on the English keyboard. I'm not sure though, to be honest. Um, yeah. Exit game. Thanks for playing. As I said, 
thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope this helped. Um, many other trains have many other systems. I recommend checking the manual for the information about specific trains and also for the information about specific safety systems that some trains may have. For example, every single Austrian or German train does have the PZB and every British mainline train has the AWS and TWS system. So yeah, I'd recommend checking the relevant manual sections. And otherwise, if you have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask either on my Discord server or on the audiogames.net forum in this specific topic, which I'm sure you can find pretty easily since it seems to be a rather interesting game. So that means the topic's usually somewhere in the first 10 in the new releases room. So yeah, you know, thanks for joining me. I hope it helped and hear from you soon.